9 p.m. today, Queen's Square, Bristol, Clive Bay, Bailey Blues, about the upcoming Bristol Blue Fiesta. So I understand you've been in the business for 20 years and you're also director of Blue Fiesta, aren't you? That's correct, yes. How did you get into it in the first place? Um, I had actually had a flight. I was crewing for um, a friend of mine who had a blue. And they landed up at the Filton Airdrome mm -hmm. and I went in to collect the blue and the security guy said, you need to get it out and put it down straight away, it's an active runway. And so the pilot then, his name was Paul Wozner, took the flight. And that was it, I was, I was done. Oh, End wow. of my fixed wing flying finished then and, and now it's booted, yeah. What did you say you did before that fixed wing? Yeah, yeah, I was very much into aerobatics and gliding, so... so uh, yeah, so it's so. always been part of the aerobatics. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so where's the, your favourite place that you've ever flown over? Do you have a favourite place? Blimey, there's been a few. <laughs> I was the first European to fly in Iran, that was spectacular. Wow. Um, um, myself and three or four of the other pilots here go out to Burma each winter and fly out there, that's oh. beautiful. But we've got beautiful places in England. Um, on Wednesday morning I flew right away over the Brecon Beacon. Which is like... And how does it compare flying from Bristol? How good does Bristol look from up high? It's stunning <laughs> because you've got the river, you've got the gorge, the suspension bridge into the floating harbour with the SS Great Britain and the Matthews very often there. Um, it, you know, it's lovely, and then out into the countryside. So Bristol's got it's got the architecture, it's got the, the industrial side of it, mm. um, and then the countryside as well. I believe that you managed to fly. I think it's 22,000 feet as well initially. And Blimey, you've done your own work, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it's a record that still stands. That Joe, my wife, and myself, we did 22 and a half thousand feet out of the Fiesta uh, many years ago, and I've tried to break it twice, but never succeeded. And what can we expect from the Balloon Fiesta this year? Well, it's very exciting. We've got 150 balloons, which, which is a great, I mean, if you want to put a finger in and, and see what the economy's doing, um, it dropped down to about 90 balloons a few years ago. We're now back up to 150 balloons, so obviously the economy's better, um, which is nice to see. Um, and, and so that's very exciting. We've got some great special shapes coming in. We've got a, um, a big World War um, I um, exhibition which is interactive to give people an idea of what life was like in, in World War One. We've got the Great War Display Team and they're um, an aerobatic team. They're coming in in replica World War One aircraft and they'll be putting on a, um, a dogfight, etc. Just like the sort of thing that happened in World War One on the Saturday and Sunday. My favourite jet, the Typhoon's coming in on the Friday and Saturday. Um, that's great. And then we've got, of course, the Brighton Windmills. I was going to ask you about the night glow as well. We have, we have about 25 Ian Martin. Um, it's after a night glow, um, so we have 25 balloons um, tethered to the ground, similar as they were here this morning, but at night and they light up like 100 foot high light bulbs and they all light up to music, uh, so it's great, great big firework display. So it will be absolutely packed and, and a great time to see. Incredible, well, thank you so much for giving up your time. It was really great to be here today in Queen Square in Bristol to get a little taster of what it's going to be like. Needless to say, it should be another really fantastic year for the Bristol Balloon Fiesta.